the politician behind bars entertainment ccg network radio you are now rocking with the get rich rapid podcast with my mans daniel scott aka eskimo don't get mad get motivated bitches, bitches. bitches. What's good, motherfuckers? We're back for the Get Rich Rapping Podcast. Last week, we had Adam Ivy. I know you guys gave a lot of great feedback on that shit. And it was it was glad to hear the good things. I was glad, should I say, to hear the good things that you guys had to say about it. Today, I've got the man, the legend, CG Kid. One controversial motherfucker, but someone who is very good at what they do. So, I guess I'll just start off by asking CG Kid himself, who is CG Kid? Hey, I'm crazy. <laughs> You're right. I'm, I'm a, as William Jackson once said, CG Kid is a crazy, disgusting motherfucker, but we love him. <laughs> that's, that's a very fair point, man. That's a very fair point. Yeah, I'm. Uh, I mean, I'm a hip hop artist, and I love like hip hop, and I like. Uh, I don't like. I like punchliners, and I like uh, people who are really into the craft. Like, I like uh, Hopson, Snow the Product, Yellow Wolf. Eminem, of course, Ritz, uh, Tech Nine, all that. That's the kind of music that I like listening to, and I like to try to produce myself. Yeah. So I have a lot of love for like the real multi-syllable speed rap with punchlines and all that. I'm also an entertainer, uh, and I'm crazy and disgusting in that way sometimes. <laughs> Yeah. But uh, I seek to entertain people in the end of the day. Like, if you go through my page, it's just all kinds of shit to entertain people. Calling condom sense and saying their vibrator gave me herpes and <laughs> making a video of that. You know, or putting a condom on my head and blowing it up with my nose. And, and then the music is part of the entertainment, making songs about professing my gay crush on a... For, you know, 40-year-old black man that didn't think it was cool. <laughs> and, uh... He ended up like getting pretty mad about it, but I was entertaining everybody yeah. in the comments or making songs about porn, my porn obsession. And I'm also a recovery advocate. You know, I struggled with methamphetamines for a long time and it robbed me of all my sanity. And now I'm almost four years sober. So what? I make vlogs to try to help people with their sobriety and I make music that focuses a lot on behavioral science issues or just, you know, because yeah. like, I don't know. I didn't go through the street struggle, but I went through a lot of addiction, a lot of... I was actually obese at a point, and I was anorexic for about a year. I didn't eat any food, and parents divorced, and I was bullied. I was a kid that had no friends, and then I was popular, and then I was in an eight-year-long relationship that turned out... That started great and turned codependent and ended brutally, and I, I tried to commit suicide, and... I mean, the list goes on and on with all the shit I've been through, but I didn't go through the street struggle, but I... I did go through a lot of other struggles and I did come out somewhat sane. I'm a little crazy still, but like I'm sober, I have a job, I'm working towards something and I really want to help other people that are struggling with any of those issues. So when I say like recovery advocate, it's with, I focus mainly on addiction to drugs, mm -hmm. but I also talk about, you know, codependency and, uh, you know, being bullied. I make songs about it and how I've gotten through it, how I struggle with it, what it was like. And that's kind of like, I guess that summarizes kind of my brand and what I've been doing. Yeah, man. Uh, what I like about it all, man, is just how non-conventional it is. Like, um, I think it's just a great example to anybody out there listening in that you don't have to play this straight, like straight line, uh, I'm from the streets, I'm hard, or, you know, even if you're not from that, just trying to pretend like you're, you're on that shit. Like, you, you've literally, and like, I see a whole bunch of people engaging with your stuff, people sharing your stuff, people shouting you out for help, and then with their, their struggles, or whether it's just the entertaining stuff you do. And I've, you're a good example that you can just be you, and, and that's the essence of, of everything. Since the beginning of hip hop, I think it, it's always been, you know, you've got to express your individuality in this stuff but i feel like the the extent that you go to to you know completely be yourself and do whatever it takes to entertain people i think the i think that's a lesson for anybody that, that's out there listening man for real I really uh I, I think there's a definitely a spot in the game for people like that that are willing to you know put himself like every move you make man is like potentially putting your putting your neck on the chopping block 
Mm -hmm. you, you know, because like yeah, exactly. <laughs> you say some outlandish, crazy shit. You are a crazy and disgusting individual, man. <laughs> 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 but that's the appeal, man. I like that shit. So when was it that you felt like you really started taking things seriously with what you do? Uh, actually, like the day I started rapping, I took it serious. But I started rapping when I was 23, and it was literally the day I got sober. And it was just like. I always been in music when I was like a kid. I got into guitar and I liked rap more, but I was like, I'm Jewish, I'm white, I'm from the suburbs of Dallas, I don't belong in the rap game. Mm. And then when I was 23 and I got sober, I was like, you know what? I have a story. Regardless of all the shit I've been through, uh, I don't have the street struggle story, but I have a story. And I feel like having a story has always been really important to me. And I've heard it said, and I don't really know how I feel about it, but I've heard it said that everybody has a story. And I, I do believe that to extent, but some people have stories that are, I don't know, like it's like Eminem for, you know, being a white kid from a trailer park in Detroit in a predominantly African-American culture yeah. and then coming up from something like that. And then his story with, you know, his ex and all that, that stuff's like it rivals like Rocky, but it's actually real life. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. And I feel like that's what people do is uh, they try and keep the, the negative side from the public you know what i mean but that's what really connects with people like everyone wants to present that image of like yeah i'm doing good uh life's incredible i got all these bitches i got these cars these clothes and all that shit and we're we're on the up and all that shit but you know it, if you're just honest with people it, i feel like it just makes that connection man you know what i mean yeah and i feel that's definitely. what really a story is like and that's why everybody's story seems the same is because everyone's telling a story that's not theirs they're telling a story that they want people to think is them yeah yeah and i was just always like you know i didn't have a story but when i connected with my story that's when i started wanting to rap because I, I felt like it gave me a voice and i was serious from day one and i always knew like there was a question in my head about rapping for about a year before that yeah but I was like, I know if I do it, I'm going to take it to an extreme because that's how my brain works. Like when I was in guitar, I was playing guitar six hours a day for about six years. Yeah. Like I just know me, like if I do it, I'm not going to just do it as a hobby. So I knew the second I started writing and started rapping, it was going to be a serious thing. Yeah. And that's pretty much how it is. And I've had waves, you know, it comes in waves like where I'm. I think I'm always working on something, but sometimes I'm more serious about the marketing side yeah. than the music, and I neglect the music, vice versa. Sometimes I get too serious about the music side, and it's it's sometimes I lose that balance, but yeah. I'm always doing something. Yeah, absolutely. That leads bang right into the next question, man, which was what's been your biggest breakthrough in marketing while we're on the subject? Oh, man. It's like uh, I feel like the whole thing has been such an intense breakthrough because... Yeah. It's hard to pinpoint one thing because it's almost like a, uh, it's like you have to have every part of the, every small part of the system matters. It's like a yeah. car. You can't say that, like, like the alternator is smaller than the engine, but you still need it to start the car. Yeah, you know what I mean? And all, the, all these small pieces and all these things have added up to create, you know, this full on thing that I now see, like, I get it now. Yeah. But I, I think like the engine of the car would be creating a brand building small doing a fuckload of work yeah. and the reason you want to build small and create a brand is so when large volume comes in you know how to rock with them like these people that think they're going to blow up all not overnight i mean if you blow up and people go to your artist page and it's just soundcloud links and it's boring as hell like yeah. that's not a brand like you want people to go to your facebook page and they see a fucking experience like they can go through and see your inspiring videos they can laugh with you and they can hear your music you want to keep them there you want to get them immersed in what you do and be more than just like a check me out artist and then also just learning how to rock with people on a personal level and like doing things like understanding status updates and how they contribute to your brand and all that mm. is so critical absolutely man i think the you know that whole idea of working on a fan base one by one is solid man and i recommend anyone out there listening in like stop aiming to try and get a hundred fans in a move stop aiming to try and get a thousand fans in a move you've got all these people on your facebook that you probably don't even speak to half of them just you know start putting out stuff you feel like they'd be interested in start talking to people because i think that's that's a good thing that you do i always see you like interacting with people and like you were saying earlier about how you were creating funny content like the the prank phone calls which were hilarious man the uh <laughs> blow, blowing the condom up with your with your nostrils and shit 
<laughs> like, like don't get me wrong there's going to be a bunch of people that land on that and say mm -mm, that's not for me you know what i mean but yeah for the people who can appreciate that they're an instant i love this guy not so much the like oh yeah this guy's pretty cool they land on his page and they say they either like nah or they say i fucking love this guy you know what I mean? yeah and, I, and it, it's a polarizing thing and it's not always playing that that safe line of making sure everybody likes you it's just making sure the people who do like you fucking love you and and i think that that's the essence of what you do man i really do think that uh as far as the marketing goes and, and like you say all the the little pieces that that add up i think that you're making every single piece a cg kid piece as opposed to you know this could be anyone doing anything yeah yeah and it's it's i mean it's been like a crazy ride because when i started and i mean i remember when i started even working with you a long ass time ago it was like um i thought you just had to be phenomenal at music mm. honestly and i remember you saying something like people don't get a shit about your music mm. and like i remember like that's one of the reasons i was reluctant to really apply what you, you were talking about because i was like that's what that's what my whole strategy was just become the dopest rapper of the dopest bars yeah and this whole thing has been coming to a realization that you're right every day <laughs> 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 like uh, the whole thing <laughs> like I get it now. Like I think the music, yes, you want to be a good artist, but it's like people don't go out of their way for just another rapper. They go out of their way for people. Yeah. I mean that's the bottom line, and you need to. I feel like I want to build like you know a strong community that will go out of their way for me. So when I launch things with potential viral, like potentially viral content, say like a YouTube video, and I'm like this thing could go viral. I have. 5,000 people that are going to go out of their way to make sure that's seen and that's going to boost search engine optimization and get in the ranks and if it's truly viral then it will stay there yeah like uh understanding like having this core like on social media is so powerful because you could use it to boost things like a blog or like a website or like a youtube channel yeah and that will get in like that random generated traffic but it's very important to like take I've learned to take my time building, not rushing the process. Like I see some people with 5,000 friends and they're getting like, uh, you know, not the engagement they're getting, it looks good on the outside. But mm. on, for me, I know Facebook's algorithm and I know engagement percentage and it's bad. I Absolutely, mean, really, bad because they're not getting 1%. Even if they're getting like 50 likes or something like that or 50 comments, it's not 1%. You want to, and I've learned to try to get three, between 3 and 5% with every post. Yeah. Absolutely, and if it's man. stop, yeah, and that's just building slow. So that way, when I release that song, it's gonna rank in Facebook top news. I'm gonna have all these people willing to go out of their way for me because I provide them with value, and I authentically, you know, care about them and want them to be, you know, help them better themselves. And then when that happens, you know, that's where you put yourself in a position that you have a launching pad for viral content. Bang on, man! I love that shit. I'm the same with face. Well, with my Facebook, my uh, my personal account. I'd never, if I'm over like 500 friends, I'm like, mm, nah, I'm not, mm. And then you start seeing people you don't know, and then you start seeing a whole bunch of bullshit. Like, really, I think you can just, uh, for anyone listening, man, just make a, just to go off what, what CG Kid was saying about how, you know, the percentages count. Like, if you've got 5,000 friends, 50 likes isn't good. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. to have 5,000 friends, what that, what's that, uh, 50, what's that, like, what one percent i guess it's one percent yeah yeah one percent man that's that's awful you know like with 500 yeah. friends like i got a i posted something the other day about being number one on youtube for like five six different keywords i posted something with 500 friends and got um a hundred a hundred likes on it with only 500 friends and then there's people with like five thousand facebook friends who are struggling to get three four likes on stuff there's people with five thousand friends that i see don't get like a lick of engagement you know, it's not a yeah. race, race to 5,000 friends. It's, uh, you know, you want to get 5,000 people that you built with one by one, one by one, and, and just keep shaving off the people yeah. who, are, who, who are no good for you, man. I think people try to rush the process. Yeah. And I, I think that some, uh, I mean, luckily I didn't have that problem, but I see it happening where rappers try to add me or I, you know, I just don't accept because I'm like, rappers are the worst supporters, man. I'm like really trying to accept friend requests from people and I don't mind if they're a rapper, but when they're like profile picture screams rapper yeah. and their whole like name on Facebook screams rapper, I'm like, oh, this is probably a check me out rapper. Like yeah. if it just looks like a person, I'm like, oh, well, even if he raps, he, at least he's like understands that 
he's not going to just put it out there for everybody to see and that's your first impression of him yeah you know and i'm like you know i could get 5000 friends in a week i guarantee it i could go into like friday night live and just add everybody in there or go to like a friend's profile and just add everybody so they say oh mutual friends i'll accept but i haven't built a relationship with them they don't mm. I mean, a rapper that adds me, they're thinking, oh, he's adding me because he's a rapper and he wants to check me out. You know what I mean? And uh, <laughs> people I don't know, they're kind of like, why is this guy adding me? Oh, he knows him. That must be cool. But like, I really look for people that I relate with on social media. And uh, they either have engaged in my music or they've engaged with something I've said on a certain topic, whether that be like recovery or something I said about psychedelic drugs. But basically, when they add me, they know that there's a common ground outside of music. And yeah. that takes time. You can't just add 100 people in the night doing that. You know, on a good day, I'll get 20. On a normal day, I'll probably get three to five. And that yeah. takes time. But over time, you see it building and you see all this shit working. And uh, you get a lot of engagement and a lot of interaction from these people. Absolutely, man. I remember seeing a Hopson interview. I think it was on Hot 97. And they asked him, you know, uh, because he's relatively not unknown in it at all but because he's not part of the the game so to speak you know i mean hobson's just a standalone dude you know most of the artists that you mentioned just uh, in the beginning are like standalone artists that aren't competing for radio mm. space that aren't competing to be on these talk shows and all that shit they're in their own lane doing their thing but like they asked hobson what how do you do that how do you have so many fans but not he's like look whatever amount of fans he ever had he always worked those fans you know what i mean like the mm -hmm. whole because the the quality relationship is is what counts if you've got an artist and you do resonate with their music and you do like them and they're hitting you up and talking to you and thanking you and you know asking you for your input um like uh, i want to do something for you uh what would you like me to do would you like me to do a song on a topic of your choice or you know and running little competitions and cool things like that man that's how you you know music wise you build those quality fan relationships you know what i mean and mm -hmm. and like you say when the the artist actually i know exactly what you mean when you say that you can tell just by looking at someone's name on facebook oh you are a spammer i can <laughs> i know it. Yeah. You know i mean you look on their timeline and it's all soundcloud links and they're just saying check me out bro hot shit hot rapper ever no. No, yeah, we, we that, don't need to be friends <laughs> yeah right Absolutely. it's like working a system like if you were I, i've learned like it's the best kind of marketing i've ever gotten is where i don't market my music but people market it for me Absolutely. so it's almost like working a system so you have like five fans and then you work a system with those fans to maybe get them to add three of their fan friends or show three of their friends your music and now you have 15 and then you work a system with those 15 mm -hmm. and then you get 45 so it's like really about working closely with these people to get get like a strong following that markets your music for you because I've learned that's so much more effective and that's through experimentation. Like I used to hand out mixtapes and I had my Facebook on it and nobody was going to it. Nobody. I, mean, I handed out hundreds of these fucking things. But then I, I gave a friend of mine, uh, I gave her like five and she handed them out yeah. to her friends and then all of them came and I, that worked ever since. So like now I mail like mixtapes with my card in it and it says where i am on social media and people hand it out for me and people come to it and that's like a psycho psychology thing yeah. i don't i don't really know what it is but when someone's handed by a friend hey this is my friend who's a rapper they're much more inclined than if the rapper hands it out themselves yeah so i've learned like it's really about working a system building slowly and working a system and get it where those people will market for you and if you come out with a song that's viral and it's on youtube and it's on like page 500 of weed song these people will share it these people will engage with it and it gets shoot up to the first page just mm. because of the engagement percentage being so high absolutely man absolutely i think the you know it, it's so easy for people to fall in the the problem is is there's so many bad examples out there like if you if we were going to do percentages it'd be one of those fake ass percentages you know what i mean but you know say 95 percent just just to give it a percentage 95 percent are definitely doing it wrong and when mm -hmm. when all you've got is artists on your timeline and this is for the people out there listening if all you've got is artists on your timeline like don't don't follow what they're doing because i'm i promise you like 95 percent of the people i've spoken to at least are doing it completely completely wrong and i think that 
work in that system like cg kid was just saying is is the way you the way you're gonna do it man it's you know just working what you've got and you know because word of mouth marketing is the only marketing that you can't pay for like you can pay for in small amounts you might be able to give someone a bit of money and say i'll tell your friends but it's not going to be genuine like if companies could buy word of mouth advertising they would spend billions on the shit Mm -hmm. there's nothing and and as you were saying about the psychology it's like uh like if i was a rapper and i went to you and said i'm a hot rap rapper my cd's hot they're just gonna say well of course you you're gonna say that you know what i mean but if someone else uh comes to you like you said you uh, that girl was giving out cds for you like oh that's somebody else talking about somebody else mm -hmm. as a, it's just like uh we, we've all got a bit of self-bias in what we do to to some extent you know and i think that even if we don't recognize it consciously we we kind of recognize it subconsciously that the possibility could be that you know you're just hyping uh yourself up when you say that my music is dope or whatever yeah yeah it's crazy how that works but it's, it all ties into you know it's important to build slowly it's important yeah. to learn how to work with these people and then when the traffic starts coming in and you get big tra bigger traffic you know how to handle it Absolutely. you know what i mean you know how to work a system so you get like maybe 300 people that come in because of some song you dropped well you know how to entertain them you know how to build relationships with them because you've been practicing this whole time in your building process like you practice with five you practice with 20 you practice with 100 and you've gotten good at it so now the 300 comes in and you just already know how to do it yeah and that's like the whole system of the marketing thing it's like i said there's so many like working pieces Mm. Uh, but in the end, it's simple. Just entertain people, provide them with value, uh, build relationships with people, get people in, and then hit them with music in a way that's not spam. That's, you know, because you've built relationships, you provide them with value. They're, they're going to perceive it as valuable before they even press play. Yeah. They're going to be like, this guy's story is dope. I relate to him or I appreciate what he's doing at least. So yeah. I'm going to see if this song lines up with that. Yeah, you know absolutely, I mean? man. Because I think a lot of people's goal is to go viral. You know, like every track they make and every move they make is with the thought of going viral. But man, the worst, worst thing that could happen to somebody is to go viral before their system is in place. I would, exactly. Man, if, if I was, if I didn't have a system and uh, email system set up, uh, blog set up, SEO traffic and everything set up, and I went viral, I would fucking kick myself because all those people are gonna get their first impression of me come across and say oh now this guy ain't really got something anything going on he just had a hot uh freestyle or a, or in my case like a uh a hot vlog or whatever and when they see my name again they're gonna be like oh i checked him out before and you know he didn't have anything going on and that that's that first impression that lasts forever on a big scale to millions and millions of people you know you it burns that bridge so you always want to be working towards like we're saying that system man build that system in place so that if somebody just comes across your stuff like they they can go through the whole experience as opposed to being like oh yeah that's pretty dope what else you got oh nothing oh okay but yeah next thing type of deal and what's awesome is if you create this system before you you know you go viral you're more likely to go viral mm -hmm. if you create the system and you build because you got these people willing to go out of their way for you so you have the system and you and also the system makes it where you're you're put in a position where it could go viral because if you have say 500 people share a video and it truly is contagious mm. then when those 500 people share it you know so many people are going to see it and they're going to share it and it's going to go down the line and it's going to spread yeah and that's just comes from working that system with those 500 people and having really strong relationships having really invested in your brand to where they're going to share everything you put out. Like I put out some stuff now that doesn't have any viral potential, but they still share it. Yeah. You know what I mean? So when I come out with that music video or come out with something that really hits, I mean, of course, a lot of them are going to share it. Absolutely, man. The strength, the strength is in people, man. And I like to tell people all the time, like just communicate on a human level in everything that you do, like have conversations and don't be like my music, this or my music, that, or my passion, this or my passion, that just, normal normal conversations with they don't have don't have to be conversations about normal things it's just you know you just being a normal person when you speak to people will do do you know social media the whole clues in the name you know be social like most people wouldn't go out in public and be like you wouldn't go up in someone's face like yo listen to my music 
because it, mm-hmm. it, it's not acceptable you know what i mean like people might try it or whatever but you know it's, the, it's my thing is marketing is is universal for everything like i, I was uh i was talking to a girl last night actually she was asking me about marketing and i was telling her i said like okay i walk in a club and i come straight up to you and i'm sweating you how do you feel about that she's thinking oh well no i wouldn't be into that i said i walk into a club i smile i walk past you i go over there i talk to this person i talk to that person i'm laughing i'm smiling i'm doing my own thing i don't give a fuck about nobody in there i'm just having a good time how do you feel about me now she's like oh well i'd be interested to talk to you and come over and speak and speak to you you know what i mean i was like yeah that's that's marketing you know what i mean that is the it's the same thing the just because it's online and, and that's the thing is people are like oh online's not real and in a sense no it, online isn't real life you're not face to face with the person but you're still dealing with people and the same you know rules and and uh, not even rules just like a uh, same etiquette applies i feel exactly that's exactly right like i feel that 110 percent like you know and even my mom she got i worked with the artist and then uh, my mom liked her music and she uh, added her as a fan and then my mom was like i don't like her anymore because <laughs> she was just tagging her and shit <laughs> You know what I mean? You gotta yeah. go through people's mindset. Like, you know, people don't really. And that's it goes back to the people don't really give a shit about your music. The yeah. music's kind of like a byproduct. Like people go to a racetrack for the gas, but then they buy something inside. You know, because they're already there. And that's how the music is. People go there like the gas is like your personality. That's mm-hmm. why they're going there. Or the gas is like they relate to you or something you said. And the byproducts of music. That's like the background product. Oh, while I'm here, you know, while I'm investing in this person, I'll check that out. You know what I mean? Absolutely, man. Absolutely. So, um, I guess we should get back to the motherfucking CG kid. I, I'm, I'm hey. just wondering, man, because like I've seen you do uh, a lot of shit. I've seen you get a lot of results. I've seen you get to like, you know, j- just achieve some great things, man. But what's been your biggest achievement? Do you feel? Oh, my biggest achievement. Actually, a lot of them happened very recently. Yeah. But that I'm always my achievements seem to be getting bigger, but. One of them was a Facebook post, and it was a video of me rapping, and it was like 30 seconds long, and I boosted it to people who live in Dallas at like Tech 9, I only put $10 in it, yeah. and it got like, I think it's at like 7,000 views and 120 shares, and these are all people in Dallas, mm-hmm. and I was, they were all wanting to connect with me, and uh, all these comments, and uh, that was a big achievement for me, because it, it taught me like how to build locally. Which I think in the end it's going to play a role and if I can do a show and pull in like even 50 people then you can start making money or start opening for artists and having people actually cheer for you rather than just being the opening artist. You know, that's been like a huge achievement. Also, I've been learning like the fundamentals to rapping yeah. and just really perfecting my craft like crazy, but knowing how to do it. Like I, I think I was one of those rappers that jumped in head first and learned how to run before I learned how to walk. Mm. And now I'm going back and understanding things like how to count measures and all that and understanding syllable count and how it plays into flow and understanding like scatting, which is basically writing the flow before you write the lyrics and making them fit. Yeah. And all this shit that I never like I kind of went and blew right past. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's been like a, a big achievement for me. And honestly, uh, I think the biggest of all would be helping people get sober or better themselves in some way. And that's yeah. like I have people messaging me that. I had someone message me that when he found my music, he was, you know, an uh, alcoholic. And then that my, my music inspired him to make a change. And now he's like a better father, a better person. And he was just thanking me for that. And that's like a huge achievement. Even if it's, it doesn't matter about numbers then, if I can help one person in that way, and I have helped people in that way, that's like been my biggest achievement. Absolutely, man. Hey, there's some great achievements, man. I think the, especially that one where you say, you know, making a difference in people's lives and, and getting people clean off addiction and things. I think that, that that's that's the essence of a movement, man. To, to have mm-hmm. people part of a movement and just that, that what's the ripple effect? You know, those people that you've gone out to help are going to go out and help. It's like mm-hmm. uh, my policy has always been since the beginning, once I got in, into all of this, was like, if I just help people, all the time whenever i've got time in every day in every day the people who reach out to me the people i see struggling the people who you know are searching for the keywords that i put in youtube or whatever if i just help people overcome something in their life the, that ripple effect is gonna you know get further and and 
just to reach out to the audience, man, and say that, you know, a lot of people's pride is stopping them from helping people. You know, like, uh, I'm, I'm not, people are going to take my kindness for weakness, and, and maybe they will, but that's their loss. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. and, and I feel like, you know, you're going to get your best results from just just helping people. You know what I mean? Because I saw um, Superstar, you know, Superstar O, the producer. Yeah. Well, he just bought a, like a Lambo not long ago, man. I swear, um, I was watching a video. But like what he does is he makes videos helping other producers and helping artists uh, and just having that visual element to what he does. And, and, and you know, very similar to what a, a lot of us do where we just sit in front of a camera and help people through their struggles, through like vlog content or whatever. And through mm -hmm. doing that, he's gone from just being, you know, a producer that makes hard beats to... You know a movement and just being able to buy a lambo man mm -hmm. and that's all off you know just being helpful and building a brand online so the things that are possible for us when we you know get rid of that pride and we just help people and it's not even helping people to succeed it's just like if you genuinely help people from a genuine space like you will karma is very real man it, I, like i believe in karma so much there's so much I, I used to do that I wouldn't do now. Like, I <laughs> I see insects in my house sometimes and I'm like, oh, no, not a motherfucking spider or something. I'm about to squash and I'll say, hmm, this is going to come back on me if I kill this spider. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <I love> <laughs> no word of a lie, man. And, <coughs> ants, everything. I won't do nothing no more. You know what I mean? Like, there's, there's times where, like, maybe I won't think about it and I'll do it. And then something small will happen somewhere. And for some reason, I'm thinking it's because I killed that spider. <laughs> or it's because I cut that person up on the road. Or, or so, you know what I mean? Just some, some kind of karma from somewhere, you know what I mean? But, I, you know, I'm, I'm half joking with that. But it's just the whole idea of helping people, man. It's just not, not only for results and success and stuff. It would just be a better fucking world. And who doesn't want to live yeah. in a better fucking world? It gives a purpose, you know, it gives a strong sense of purpose when you're able to help someone out. Like, that makes the whole thing, like, a lot more worth it. Because you don't just enjoy what you do, but you're finding purpose in it. You know, and you're helping people. I've learned with uh, helping people, it's just a lot easier to create intimate bonds. Because I built with the psychedelic drug community for a while. And, uh, you know, I have a lot of knowledge, but I wasn't really able to really help people with something they were struggling with. And then I kind of moved to recovery and I saw like that now that I'm helping people, I posted in a comment my phone number for someone that was struggling to reach out to me uh, one time a while back. And now my phone gets a text probably every three days, but people finding that comment and texting me and wanting help with something. Yeah. And it's just like a lot more of an intimate bond when you help someone who's struggling with something something that you struggled with and you've gotten through it that's just so much more of an intimate bond you know what i mean and that's like really what i enjoy is having the intimate bond and i saw i was talking about earlier with having that strong base of so many people and that helps with that you know to say you helped them with something that they really struggled with absolutely man it's it's the key you know another one mm -hmm. but uh yeah, man, I, I wanted to, to put some spotlight as well on that, that product that you made because I swear to God, man, like anyone who, who's struggling, like like what the conversations we're having here, a lot of it touches on in more detail in a, in a product you recently brought out. And um, I guess I'll just give you the floor and let people know about it, man, because it's, it's dope. It's a dope product, man. Thank you. Yeah, it's just uh, CG Kids Facebook Marketing Guide for Musicians. You can find it on thecgkidexperience.com or if you search Music Marketing 101 in Facebook, you'll find it. Or if you're just on my CG Kid page, I think that there, yeah, there is a link to it in one of my videos. But it's just, you know, a lot of it is trial and error and what I've done to build as far as I could. And, uh, you know, a, a lot of it's technical. It's a lot of step by step, like, because... I remember being really confused about like things like getting people who are strangers to add me in the first place and finding people with like these common interests outside of music mm. and then understanding like what to do with them and how to provide them with value. So it's really step by step and it goes over a bunch of things to, to basically get people into your Facebook, provide them with value, how to release a song appropriately, how to do keyword research and YouTube and create content and build a community. and 
you know, really out of just everything I've done, every piece that I talked about, you know, that how all the pieces are important, they're all in this book. And uh, the whole book builds off each other to form one solid piece. But I mean, it does kind of have a step by step format. But at the end, you realize that all these things are necessary. Yeah. I loved it, man. I, I thought it was dope. And what I'll do as well is I'll put um, a link in the description for anybody who's still listening in. I'm going to put a link in the description for you to check out so you can go ahead. I recommend you buy it, man. If you if you have faith in my word, I'm sure you do if you're a subscriber and, you, and you're always watching. If you have faith in my word, man, I definitely recommend you go out there. It's not going to it's not gonna smash your budget or nothing. It's a nice price for what it is. It's completely over delivered you're getting so much bang for your buck so click the link in the description and make sure you get that for yourself and what i recommend is that you do it today because you don't want to leave her a few months when everybody has it you know you you want to get a nice little head start now so yeah man been dope talking to you i just wanted to know what well, i guess the audience wants to know too what's coming next from you man what we got to look forward to from that crazy motherfucking cg kid the I'm gonna tell you some things. I'm excited because I'm at a point of so much growth. Because like now that I have this platform, I'm like, all right, I know what I'm doing. I have this platform. I'm kind of focusing a little more on the music and getting money. Because I'm realizing being a rapper is expensive as shit. And I make ten an hour at Sam's. I'm like, this ain't gonna cut it. Like I'm working on getting a better job or getting where I can make more money so I can invest more. But yeah. I'm gonna learn to rap like a motherfucker. I'm going to rap in the next three months. I can guarantee I'm going to rap like two times better than I am now because nice. I've been practicing like four to six hours a day, which is ridiculous. Mm. I'm going to start shelling out music videos that I believe have contagious potential and, uh, you know, paying for professional production and promotion. Uh, I want to do one for voices, which is a song about addiction. And then I want to do a couple that are just lyrical shit and just really push them. I plan mm. on doing more shows and hopefully going on tour. Nice. if i can and uh meeting up with a lot of the people that have been rocking with me uh mm -hmm. i want to rock woke because I, I really want to start a clothing line eventually but in the beginning it's kind of like shit i need a press i need money to do that yeah. so until i have the money to do that i want to rock woke gear because snow the product's my favorite artist and i like her clothes yeah so i'm gonna be rocking that a lot on my page mm -hmm. and uh bigger features i want to start saving money that's what the whole money thing comes in i want to i got a, a opportunity to work with passionate mc and uh blake kaler i nice. definitely want to work with brandon kyle and i'm thinking about working with bizarre from d12 oh shit man the whole <laughs> oh, no but uh, I, I don't think that'll ever make it out <laughs> I, think, I think some kind of government agency some way is gonna gonna intervene and not let that shit come out man cg kid bizarre oh no man yeah. they're gonna start they're gonna build a hate mob. <laughs> <laughs> nah, I love that shit though, man. That that collaboration right there. No, I loved all the all of those. But that bizarre collaboration is gonna, man. I, I, I don't think anyone will ever be the same after that shit. I know, right? He's taking me to some places that I don't even want to go. <laughs> <laughs> good shit, man. So, yeah, there we have it, folks. CG kids, some real good game. Uh, like I say, click that click that link in the description go get that product man cg kid was there anything else you wanted to say before we wrapped up uh, i want to say the one thing is that it's very important that you love what you do and that you're built for this and love is an action not an emotion which might cause to me that's what it means you're actually putting in the action it's like a parent can say they love their kid but if they're out drinking every night and they're never with their kid then their actions speak differently so you're you have to see that you love it through the actions because sometimes you'll hate it emotionally you'll want to quit there's going to be times where the fame and the money's not there. There's going to be times where you don't believe in yourself and no one else believes in you, but you're still working and that's because you love it. Nice. So that's like a very important thing. And I'm realizing that the more I get into it, like I sleep four hours a night and I'm trying to juggle job, you know, getting money and doing this. And it's, I'm like, this is like, you know, I hate it sometimes. Sometimes I'm like, fuck this. I just want to quit and focus on going and getting my engineering degree and living like a normal fucking person. But I have no choice. Like yeah. it's, and it's because I love it. There's something deep within me. And it's not about desire. I, am, I mean, I think a lot of people get caught up in desire. Like, mm. who do, in the right mind doesn't want to be rich and famous? Oh, this is but bad. what's going to happen? What's going to happen? <laughs> what's going what's gonna to happen when it's been four years and you're not rich? You're not famous. The girls aren't there. You're living in your dad's house. 
you're busting ass working eight hours a day on something that's not paying you uh the the love has to stem deeper within that so i think it's very important to make sure you're cut out for this nice man i i don't even want to say anything else but hey motherfuckers hope you enjoyed the episode make sure you tune in next week click the link in the description peace and love don't get mad get motivated hey